Um, hello there, my friends. My name is Carl Zipper. I run the backwoods engineering programs here at Mount Alamuchi Scout Reservation in Byram, New Jersey, um, where the gentle wind lofts away your troubles and sorrows. I'm here today to um, talk to you about one of my favorite activities, um, tying knots and lashings and building stuff with them. Um, specifically, I want to talk with you folks about the tripod lashing. It's a, um, a very useful lashing, you know, both for what I do, but also for a variety of more general purposes when you're in the outdoors. And I'm going to show you today two different ways of um, approaching the tripod. You know, one way is if you're working with relatively short spars, um, like the eight-footers, you know, that I'm going to be working with right now. And then I'm going to show you a second way of putting together a tripod lashing. You know, if you intend to build a tripod with um, very large spars, that would be difficult to, uh, you know, balance and stand up. So let's get started, though, with the smaller tripod, um, the eight-foot spars. You can see here I have um, three spars. They're all about the same size. And you can't see it on the camera, but the first thing that I did is um, before I start lashing my tripod together, I find the butts of the spars, you know, the bottoms where they're going to be fitted against the ground. And I make sure that they all line up, you know, more or less as close as I can get them. Um, if there is any difference in the length of the three spars you're going to be working with, you know, it's a lot better to have it at the top um, than it is at the bottom. You know, because if you have it at the bottom, then when you stand your tripod up, it's going to stand up crooked. So once you've done that, it's time to start the lashing. Um, you start off by tying a clove hitch around one of the three spars. Doesn't matter the slightest which one it is. Um, I'm gonna tie it around the top here. To tie the clove hitch, you wrap around the spar so that on the top of it, you have an X that you form. You guys can see the X here. And then you keep wrapping around. And when you come up again, you tuck the working end of your rope, that is to say the end that you're doing the knot with, underneath the middle of that X. And you tighten it up, make it look nice. Now, I made my clove hitch. What I'm going to do is, as I tie the lashing, I'm going to work up from the clove hitch towards the ends of the spars. Um, that's going to make it a, a whole lot easier and a whole lot less work to get this, this lashing done. Um, every lashing has two parts. It has what's called wrapping turns. Those, um, that's where you take the rope and you wrap it around the spars to hold them together. And then it has what's called frapping turns, which wrap around the wrapping turns to tighten everything up. Um, we're gonna start off with the wrapping turns, as we always do. And the wrapping turns for the tripod lashing, you know, you're basically doing an over, under, over, under weave, kind of like a figure eight almost. So let's put one of those in. Gonna come over this spar, under this one, over, under, over, under. And that's a wrapping turn for the tripod lashing. Um, I'm gonna pull this tight, you know, and try and get these spars in close to each other before I move on to the next one. Um, you know, people come up to me on the street corners, you know, they ask, Carl, how many wrapping turns do I put in for my tripod lashing? Um, you know, there's no hard and fast number. Um, I usually try and do at least six. If I'm building a tripod that I know is gonna have a whole lot of force on it, you know, I might do eight, I might do 10. Um, usually what I try and do is whatever piece of rope I'm working with um, to make the lashing, I try and use just about the whole rope to form it. Um, I'm using a 20 foot rope here, you know, which is what I would use if I intended for the lashing to see a lot of load on it. So I'm probably gonna wind up with, um, you know, at least eight, maybe 10. But why am I talking? I should be working. Otherwise, you know, we're gonna be here forever. Um, so you can see, you know, the big advantage of working up from the clove hitch towards the end of the spars is I don't have to pull all the slack rope through every time I go over or under. I can just pass the middle of the rope around the ends and save a whole lot of time. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've watched people tie this lashing and you know every time they go over or under you know they they stop and they pull all the slack through and it takes them you know five or ten times as long as it needs to um, you'll save a lot of time and a lot of aggravation if you do it this way um, another thing worth mentioning is um you know there's a number of different ways out there in various books and publications you know, for how to tie this lashing. This is the way I like the best with the over-under wrapping pattern. Um, another very common way that I see that isn't as good, you know, is folks, they just take the rope and they wrap around all three. You know, it's just a big circle. 
and then they, they do their fraps and they finish up. Um, that way is certainly a little bit easier, you know, to comprehend in your head. But the big disadvantage of it is you have a lot less um, surface area of the rope in contact with the spars. And the strength of this lashing is largely dependent, you know, on how much friction there is between the rope and the spars where they touch. So the more surface you have in contact, you know, the stronger the lashing is going to be. Um, I've done my wrapping turns. I've got, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got eight exactly. Um, you know, and I have just enough rope left here, you know, about four foot or so to do my fraps. Um, the frapping turns, I'm going to do in two locations. I'm going to do them here, and I'm going to do another set here. And they're not going to really touch either of the spars. They're going to come around in between them. And they're going to pull on those wrapping turns to get them that much tighter. I made them pretty tight when I put them in in the first place, but that's never tight enough. Um, you always got to do a little bit more. So that's one set of wrapping turn or frapping turns. Um, I did two fraps. Don't need to do any more. Um, it's just extra work. Going to do two more up here. You know, I see a lot of um, a lot of lashings generally. You know, where people do a whole pile of frapping turns um, at the end. You know, and that's that's really just wasted effort. Um, if you do two good ones, that'll get it just as tight. You know, as three or four or five or any other large number. Um, fraps. So, clove hitch, you know, eight or so wrapping turns, two fraps here, two fraps here, and I've got a little bit of the rope left. The only thing I have to do now is I have to finish off the lashing. I'm going to do that by tying another clove hitch. Um, you can tie it around any one of these three spars, you know, sort of wherever the rope ends up is where you should put it. Um, I'm going to put mine right here. Now, um, if you try and tie the clove hitch at the end of your lashing the same way that you tied it at the beginning by wrapping around and making the X and tucking under, um, your clove hitch is, you know, 99 times out of 100 going to wind up too far away from the lashing. And if it slides in, you know, your fraps get loose, then your wraps get loose, then your lashing fails, and then you have big problems. Um, what you need to do is you need to have the clove hitch in as close to the lashing as it will get. And the way you do that is by tying it a little bit differently um, than the way I showed at the beginning of the video. What you do is you make a series of half hitches. Um, a half hitch is a very easy, you know, sort of building block of a lot of knots um, to form. What you do is you start wrapping around the spar and you hold the rope with one hand, you know, out away a little bit. And as you come back around, you tuck that rope in between the spar and where you're holding it out. And that's a half hitch. Now once I make that half hitch, I'm gonna take it down, you know, as close as I can get it to the wrapping turns, tightening it all the while, which is very easy to do. And then I'm gonna take, you know, the little bit of rope that I have left, and I'm gonna make one more, and I'm gonna be really close here. But, ah, look at that, just barely got it in. Ah, you know, I would certainly recommend you know, when you're doing this, um, give yourself a little more margin for error than I just did. It's always better to have, you know, about four to six inches of tail coming out the end of your clove hitch. But uh, this will do for now. So this is the tripod lashing. Um, the last thing to do is to stand the tripod up. I'm going to take it out here. Uh, and with a short tripod, you know, it's easy enough. Just keep all three legs together. Lift it up and then hold it upright while spreading out the legs one at a time. Um, there we go. And that's a pretty good tripod. Um, that's how you do it for short ones. If you're gonna do a tripod with tall spars, you know, let's say um, 15 foot and above, you know, then though you're gonna have a whole lot of trouble standing your tripod up if you've tied it the way I just showed you um, because it's going to get very top heavy you know you're going to need to have multiple people under there you're going to be creating the potential for a whole lot of danger um, so there is a better way we can do it and I'm going to show you that in just a moment okay my friends so um, thanks to the magic of video editing here you know we now have another tripod um, and I can show you how I like to deal with tripods for longer spars 
Um, a couple of years ago, I was doing a project where I had to build two tripods out of 20 footers. And, you know, if I had tried to stand those tripods up the way that, um, the way that I showed you just a moment ago, you know, it would have been well near impossible. I mean, you would have had all sorts of, you know, big top heavy stuff you were trying to lift up in the air and hold upright. And um, not only would it have been hard, but it would have been dangerous. So there's a better way we can deal with um, tripods when we're working with very long spars. And the way we do it is we, we do almost the exact same thing I just showed you with two significant differences. Um, you know, so the first difference is that when we lay them out, um, we lay them out so that two of the spars, the feet of the tripod are pointing off down one way and the other spar, the feet are pointing, you know, the other way. Um, the reason for that will become apparent in just a moment. Um, the second thing we do is when we tie the lashing, you know, physically we're following the exact same steps, you know, and physically it looks more or less the same. But the big difference is that we leave the lashing loose. Um, this is just about the only time in my life that I would ever leave a lashing loose. You know, it, it really pulls at my heartstrings to do it, but it is, you know, the right way to approach this problem. Um, so we tie the lashing, but we tie it loose. And then when it comes time to stand it up, you know, we're gonna need a crew of multiple people. Um, you're gonna need at least four people. Um, you know, depending on how heavy the spars are, you might need seven or eight. Um, and what you do is, you know, you have one or two people, you know, right in the middle here, and then you have another one or two people at the end of each of the three legs. And you start, you know, you have your two guys in the middle, guys or gals, they start lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. And once they get it high enough that they can't lift anymore, uh, the folks on the ends of the three legs, now what they can do is they can push. They can push those legs towards each other. And as they do, the tripod comes up and up and up and up and up. And then once you have it standing up, you know, one at a time, you just move the three legs to get the thing sort of set in. Now, if you intend, you know, to just sort of use the tripod as is, as say a lifting apparatus or whatever, um, before you can do that, you know, you need to make sure that the butts of the tripod can't kick out and collapse when you put a load on it. Um, there's a couple different ways you can approach that. Um, one way that works pretty well is you take your shovel and you know you dig a hole at each foot and you put the foot down in the bottom of the hole um, you know the depth depends on on what sort of load you're dealing with but at least six inches you know maybe a foot maybe more um, depending on how much weight you're dealing with um, another thing you can do if you're working on a you know a hard surface like um, you know bedrock or ice or whatever is you can um, you can take you know three spars and you can lash cross pieces across using the square lashing to prevent it from kicking out um, or you know and this is a little bit easier if you have a big enough piece of rope is you can use you know a sufficiently large diameter piece of rope and tie it between the three legs um, in lieu of those braces you know and then you're ready to um, then you're ready to start loading up the top of the tripod you know with a lot less worry that it's going to collapse on you um, so you know, that's how you do the tripod lashing when you're dealing with tall spars. Um, I already showed you how to do it when you're dealing with shorter spars. Um, so that's, you know, pretty much what we have to say here about the tripod lashing. Um, I hope that you learned a thing or two, and I hope that you have a great day. Thanks very much. Well, I, I was thinking, you know, if we, if we wind up doing these full project videos, I think the opening scene, the project already needs to be done, you know? Yeah, okay. It's like, all right, so I'm going to show you how to build this tower, but in order to do that, we're going to have to go back in time. Right. No, no, I want to have like a cardboard box or something. Oh, to do this, we have to get into my time machine. Oh, time. <laughs> Just okay. have like a cardboard sheet that has time machine spray painted on it. That is absolutely our style. <laughs>